Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. Okay, so in this video, we're just gonna take a look at getting started with Pages. So this is the Pages app here, and we're just gonna jump straight in. Now, when you first go into it, don't worry too much about my side of my screen here looking different or things here. This is the holding page, similar to Keynote, similar to iMovie, similar to all those apps, where all of your library of work is gonna be collected. Down here are the places where I can store things um, or shortcuts to get to you know, documents, etc. Not really gonna go into that just now. We're just gonna have a look at the basic anatomy of getting started with a document. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this, obviously here. You can see it says create document up here. It also gives a plus. Now there's something which is really, really useful. And I think if I'd started in this way, it would really help me now because I'm not the most organized person in the world. If I show you what my pages screen looks like, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I'm trying to get better with folders, but I find now actually that when I start a new project, if it's, if it's going to be part of something that's going to be a lot bigger, I will try to put things into folders. So just to quickly show that, I'm going to go back into that training folder that I'm using here. If I drag down slightly, you'll see it releases um, a few extra hidden options. One of them being this create new folder, which you could just type into and you could just uh, add in. I'm just going to say this is going to be a YouTube demo. Okay, tap done. It gives me this folder that I can then work within. If I tap within that folder, I have this kind of empty template place. My library hasn't got anything in it yet, but the second I start a project, it's gonna be collected here. That is tip number one for doing anything in pages, but use that same tip for Keynote, for iMovie, for, for anything that you can have folders. I should scrap that. You can't do it in iMovie. It'd be great if you could do it in iMovie, but definitely in Keynote and definitely in Numbers. So let's jump in and create a new document, like I said, either by tapping here or the plus at the top. When you first go into it, you'll see that there are a whole range of templates that you can use. So this really depends on what you're creating. I love making books and I use the, uh, the books outline, these templates a lot when I'm creating my books, but Pages allows you to create all sorts of things. You'll see from reports to books to letters, CVs to posters to, to all sorts of things that you can create. Now, in later videos, we'll have a look maybe at some of the specifics about what you can do, but this video is just about getting started. So let's jump into a blank template. Now, as with most of the iWork apps, they all look pretty similar. And that's really, really useful when you're teaching your students because it means that they're gonna navigate their way around the page. So everything that I show you here is gonna transfer across to numbers. It's gonna transfer across to Keynote as well. The only difference really is pages is, purple, is orange and numbers is green and Keynote is blue. And so these colors will change along the top so you know which app you're in. And again, that's a really, really helpful tip. Now, whilst we're looking at the functions here, let's just start on the left-hand side. If I tap on documents, it's gonna take me back to that library page. So that's how we're gonna get back and forth. The next one across from that is the viewing option. So it's gonna tell me how I want to look at the project I'm working on. I can have two pages. So if I'm working across multiple documents, I can see, you know, if I get to the end of this page, what it's going to look like as that drags onto the next page. Useful word count, you know, if I'm doing things and having that ruler. So across the top, I can start to think about indents and I can start to think about the, the layout of my design. I'm just going to turn those things back off, though, and keep it as this blank page. Next one along. As you start to build pages, you can actually have a table of contents. This is a really, really useful tool. Very traditional in terms of its use of a word processor, but equally useful when it comes to making your books. You can actually end up with a table of contents, which allows the viewer to be able to jump easily throughout your book as an EPUB. And again, we'll look at that in later videos. Next one along is the back tab, if you make a mistake. There you go, quickly tap back. Now this bit here, blank, this is a really critical thing. I've talked about organization before. I'm gonna talk about organization again. 
If you're anything like me, I'll make a document, I won't think about titling it, and then everything ends up being document one, document two, document three, up to document 176, okay? It can get out of hand. So when you start, think about renaming that document, and that's the way to do it. Just tap at the top, delete what's there, and just type in what your document is gonna be about. Oops, it's not going to be a trading document. It's going to be a training document. There we go. So there we go. Quickly just retitle those things. So moving over to the right then, here we've got our edit. So this is where we can do formatting. So where we can change lots of features. Our add, this is where we can add lots of stuff. So for instance, we can add multimedia. We can add shapes. And there's a whole world of shapes in here that you can choose from. Great shapes that you can just uh, enhance any of your work with. We can add in our charts and we can have them two-dimensional, three-dimensional, or interactive, and we can have our tables. So this is the same again, whether you're in numbers, keynote, or pages, all of these are the same and you can do the same things. There are some additional things slightly across different platforms, uh, but fundamentally it's exactly the same. Then we have our collaboration button. So if I want to share this with other people, if I want them to um, you know, come on board and edit the document with me, there are lots and lots of share options you can do in here. So you know, have people uh, view what you're doing, have people be able to comment, be able to make changes, etc. Lots and lots of things and lots of ways that you can share it across different platforms. So whether you're Office 365 or Google or you're using Apple IDs or Shobi or Seesaw, so many different ways that you can share your documents with people. And then the final one, is possibly the, the biggest one really for pages because there are so many things in here that you can do as well. This is your share icon um, where we can share our things directly out. So once I've completed it, I can share it in pages format to other people. I can export it to other people in various things. So I can export it as a PDF, export it as Word, turn it into an EPUB, um, or even create it as a pages template. And again, we will look at pages templates in another video when we get there. We can also print if you need to print. I'm really kind of against printing things unless you have to, but it's useful to know that you can print things um, if you're connected to a printer. Um, you know, you can you can print these things and it's just going to work that way. Pick up the local printers, etc. I don't really like printing stuff anymore. Save the trees and all that. Okay, next things. Let's have a look down here. So there's lots and lots of other options in here, and again, very very similar depending. You know, whether you're in keynote pages or numbers, lots and lots of things are the same. There's one thing in here though that definitely stands it out from the others, and that is presenter mode. Now, presenter mode, when I put some text on the screen, changes how I use pages and how I use my screen. So if I was to just quickly add in some text on here, if I go to that presenter mode, it turns this into a teleprompter. Hadn't realized I just typed hell everyone. Let's be a bit more positive. Let's go with hello everyone. Back to the three dots, back to presenter mode. Here's my here's my teleprompter. And how this works is really, really nice. So tap on the letters in the top corner. I can change the size of the text. I can change the background color. Nice and simple. I can change the font, might make it easier for me to see it in a different font. Uh, you know, make something stand out a little bit more, whatever, however. Um, and then turn on auto scroll and change the speed. And now the simple thing here is, as you can see, second I tap on the screen, it's going to just keep scrolling up. So if I was making a video, if I'm talking about something, this is a great tool to use with your students for you creating something to keep you focused on what you're doing exactly as they do when they're doing professional presentations. Really, really nice and easy. Cool. Okay. A couple of other things to highlight. I'm currently using the, the keyboard, which means I've got this uh, screen down the bottom. So some quick sort of um, jumps if I need to use them so I can um, edit the text. Uh, if I highlight the text here, I can tap here and, and change the size of the font. I can change the indentations, um, you know, change the, the font styles. Really, really quick, easy access to those things. If I take my iPad off of my keyboard for a second, you'll get those same things. So if I jump in and get my uh, keyboard to jump up, you'll see that those, they just hover above the keyboard. Because I'm in the keyboard, I just get more screen real estate, so they just drop down. Um, predictive text down the bottom, etc., etc. So that's basically it for how you can use pages. 
tune into my other videos to have a look at some of the more design tweaks that you can use to make the most out of pages.